Howdy, friend. Heard my little broadcast, did you? Yeah, you look the type. The job is simple. Help us get this caravan in design and find new Canaan. The pay is 25 caps per day. Half up front, half on return. You'll get a bonus if we make it in design, plus another bonus if we reach new Canaan. Oh, uh, one more thing. Don't mention the name Joshua Graham to anyone. Anyone. Just don't. It makes the new Canaanites powerful uncomfortable. And it scares the britches off the tribals. Don't talk about the burn man either while you're at it. Trust me on this one. It's for your own good. We're a smaller company out of Sacktown, up in the northern part of the NCR. We run some business through New Reno. They're on the little loop. Had a nice run to Salt Lake City too, but uh, then we lost contact with New Canaan, and that went all to hell. You ain't wrong. Losing the Salt Lake City run really stung us. If we can't re-establish contact with this run, we'll be in real trouble. Without New Canaan's mission in Zion, the only ways to Salt Lake City are down the old I-80, or up through Ogden. The highway is too risky. NCR's rangers are so busy here in the Mojave, they don't have the manpower to keep the raiders off. Ogden's just too far. We'd lose more in travel expenses than we'd ever earn. Don't know much about the place, but I can tell you about the people. The new Canaanites were some kind of religious group from before the war. They control the old city of Ogden, a ways north of Zion, and they got themselves a nice defensible mission in the canyon itself. Or they did. They trade a fair bit with the tribes in Zion. Well, the ones that don't try to kill them anyways. I ain't a praying man myself. They paid for their goods and dealt square with us. That's all I ever cared about. But don't think that just because they're religious, that they're pacifists. They take care of their own, and they're damn fine marksmen too. Nope. Hence this caravan. If we don't make contact with the new Canaanites, happy trails might as well just shrivel up and die. Shoot. Well, I ain't never been inside myself. Did some trading with the new Canaanites from their mission there. But that was all on the outskirts. All the old ways in and out were destroyed after the war. But we got ourselves the location of a pass the new Canaanites use. That's our way in. That's why I wanted someone with a Pip-Boy on the caravan. The map will be helpful for checking the topography, keeping us on the trail. Well, it ain't good, I tell you that. It's not like the Mojave or the NCR. Hell, even Arizona under Caesar is safer. You got raiders all over the damn place. Tribes of degenerates that'll eat you as soon as look at you. Regional warlords, the works. Not too many decent places to stop and trade. New Canaan's one of the only ones left I know about. They're about what you'd expect. Crazy. Jacked up on Kim's, violent as hell, and not too bright. The worst of the 80s. But we won't be passing through their turf on this run. Dangerous enough we won't be going near them if we can help it. I got no desire for my head to decorate some little gas station for its walls, thanks. That's right. The folks that lived in Zion before the war, they didn't just get a little savage. They're downright feral. Most of them don't even speak English anymore. You got to get yourself a new Canaanite translator to talk to them. The ones you really got to watch out for are the White Legs from the Great Salt Lake. They'll attack just about anyone that ain't one of theirs. Shoot. Yeah, reckon you will. You looking for trouble, bud? I got plenty to spare, so watch your ass around me. Hey, 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 fuck you! I didn't say nothing about using Psycho!
I travel light on purpose, okay? But if the price is right, I'll tell Jet I'm carrying less, so you can carry more. What's your offer? No sweat off my tits, asshole. Guess you better start deciding what gear you're gonna leave behind. God damn it! I didn't say nothing about using Psycho. But, uh, just talking hypno-theoretically here, got any suggestions? All right, all right. I'm a little light. How many hits you holding? That'll last me a while. Nice. Now take your caps and fuck off! You got a deal. You're lucky, trust me. Nice job, Eagle Eye. Of course I got a pit boy and a vault suit. So what? Sorry. The shit I do with it is so far over your head, be wasting my time to put it in words you could understand. Basically, it makes me badass. More badass, I mean. It's totally mind-blowing shit. It ain't just some bracelet. Know what I mean? Jed says it's got maps and shit like that. So that's how I'm gonna guide this caravan where it needs to go. Not that I didn't know all that already. Huh? Of course I noticed. First thing I noticed about you. Me? I'm so used to wearing mine, it's just normal. Don't think you're someone special just because you got one. Bullshit! Ain't nothing wrong with my pit boy. I, I mean, pit boy. Look, this is a sweet gig for me. Don't go fucking it up. What are you after, anyways? Fine. Just keep it to yourself, all right? Don't be such a fucking jerk about it. Where the fuck you think? Vault 2 2. That's where I grew up. Oh, you've been to Vault 2-2, huh? I may have been exaggerating a little. Truth is, I got the suit and the pit boy off a dead prospector who came out from Zion. Guy was dead when I found him, okay? Had a ton of shit on him. That's how I know there's good loot in Zion, see? You want to know what I do, bud? Anything I fucking want! I'm one of a kind. I've been places, see? And done things! Lots of them! And when it's time to kill shit up, hell yeah, I'm a fucking storm of death! Something or someone make the mistake of crossing Ricky? I'll fucking dead-eye him, her, or it. In fact, yeah, in fact, that's my nickname. Dead-Eye Ricky. That's my name. Uh, how you think? I shoot things in the eye. That's how good I am. Yeah, I'm that good. Why, uh, once I got jumped by three Death Jaws. Except, actually, it was four of them. Imagine that! But I didn't panic. Because... Because I never panic. What I did was become a storm of death. Shot every one of them monsters pop in the eye. No, no, you heard me right. Death Jaws. They're like Death Claws. But bigger teeth. Or there was the time one of them Steel Brotherhood assholes made the mistake of messing with me. Last mistake he ever made. What's it sound like I'm saying? If I was saying what you said I was saying, then yeah, I said it. I was walking along, minding my own, and up pops one of them Brotherhoods. He yells, hand over that laser rifle, asshole. So I hand it over, just to make him think I'm scared. But really, I'm not. I never am. Before he knows what hit him, I draw my 11 millimeter machine gun and bam, bam, right through the eye slit in his helmet. DOA.
Then I guess this dumb fucker's armor must have been D-Series or something. All I know is, he died up real dead when I killed him, okay? Well, I grew up near Dayglow out west, so yeah, I grew a third nut that glows in the dark. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Hey there. Looking to join this caravan, huh? Look to me like you can handle yourself. Earning my keep, Jed hired me on as a caravan guard for this expedition of his. The work suits me. I've tried staying put in one place, but it never works out. Grew up in New Reno, and I couldn't put that snake pit behind me fast enough. Then I wound up wasting the prime of my life playing sheriff in Caliente. Little town north on the 93. Talk about a pain in the ass. You ask me, best to keep moving. At least the scenery changes. Imagine New Vegas if there was no Mr. House type fella keeping the peace. Then give everybody a gun and a jet addiction. Town's run by a bunch of crime families. No law to speak of. Make trouble and you wind up buried in Golgotha outside town. The scuzz factor's off the charts. Non-stop whoring and drugs. Couldn't walk down the street without getting asked to star in a porn movie. So I got my ass out of there while I still owned it. Guess I figured the answer to every problem was rule of law. Naive, huh? Place lived up to its name, that's for sure. When you got fresh water and a trickle of geothermic power, always be some gang of assholes wants to kill you for it. Spent more years and took more bullets than I care to admit protecting that hellhole from dangers within and without. If it wasn't the 80s or the White Legs raiding, it was someone from town drunk off his ass trying to win an argument with a shotgun. Got tired of shooting the folks I was supposed to protect. So, now I do this. What's the difference? Raiders is raiders. Bunch of them swept into town and dragged off two working girls. Deputies and me gave pursuit straight into 80s territory. By the time we caught up with the girls, there wasn't much left of them. So we turned for home. Made it back to Caliente without further losses, but we was watched the whole way. Never seen so few people cover so much land. Goddamn creepy. If the 80s had wanted to kill us, we would have been dead. Guess they figured we weren't worth the trouble. Used to be they raided northeast of Caliente time to time. But then the Desert Rangers fell apart ten years ago, absorbed into the NCR. Soon enough, the White Legs were swarming all over that stretch of I-15. Folks learned not to head north if they wanted to keep their scalps. Eventually, the White Legs destroyed the bridges across the Virgin River over in Arizona. End of discussion. Catch you another time, then. Are you here to join me a while longer? Are we? I bet you are. But you ain't going nowhere loaded down like a pack Brahmin. You ain't never been to Zion, have you? We'll be passing through a whole mess of narrow slot canyons and high rough passes. A big pack will get you wedged in like a super mutant crawling through a storm drain. And too much weight will kill you in the thin air. I bet you... There's a chest over yonder. You can store your extra in that. It'll be safe as can be until you get back. Yeah, what's it this time?
Are you here to jar at me a while longer? Or are we ready to get this show on the road? Are you now? You know we ain't coming back this way for a good long while now, right? And you know about the weight limit. I don't want no whining about old Mr. Masterson. I left my one-of-a-kind plasma cannon back at base. Can we go back for it? You sure you're ready now? Well, all right then. Let's get moving. We got a long road ahead of us. The paths we're following are slow going, so you might as well keep your ears open and listen to what old Jed has to say. A few decades back, folks in the NCR started to hear about a community in northern Utah called New Canaan. Didn't know much about them, except that they were religious folks, sent out missionaries to talk to the tribes. We've seen our share of cults, but the New Canaanites, they were honest traders. Good fighters, too. Raiders wouldn't tangle with them. But then, the Legion appeared in Arizona. I reckon you know all about them. Turns out Caesar's first war chief, the Malpace Legate, was a new Canaanite, Joshua Graham. Legend goes that Graham was the meanest, toughest son of a bitch in the whole damn Legion. The new Canaanites wouldn't talk about him. They were ashamed. Guess I can't blame them. Well, at Hoover Dam, the Malpace Legate finally met his match. Hanlon and Oliver kicked his new Canaanite butt right back over the river. Caesar had to make an example for the others, to show them that even at the highest level, failure wouldn't be tolerated. He had Graham covered in pitch, lit on fire, and thrown into the Grand Canyon. People say he didn't even scream on the way down. Not long after, some of the slaves and tribals started to talk. Said Graham wasn't dead. Shouldn't have been any surprise. All this talk bothered Caesar. So he forbade anyone from speaking his name. Wanted to erase Joshua Graham from history. He got his wish. Joshua Graham disappeared. And in his place came legends of the burned man walking the wastes. Probably just a tribal ghost story. But New Canaan's been silent for a long time. Maybe it's a coincidence. Maybe the Malpace Legate is dead. Or maybe Joshua Graham did crawl out of that canyon and finally found his way back home. All right, people. Been a long couple of weeks. But here we are. Zion. I know your feet hurt. I know you're tired. But I need everyone's mind on the trail ahead. Ain't the trail ahead worries me, Jed. Those descents we made through that slot canyon back up there. Ain't no way we're getting back out the way we come. And then what? God damn it, Stella heard you the first time. And the 15th, too. The new Canaanites will know a way. And if they don't, we've got the maps on our friend's Pip-Boy over there. Enough lollygagging. Get moving. And keep an eye out for tribals. Sorry to bother you with reality, old Jed. Who cares if you... Can't get back out the way we come. It's not a problem. Shh. Hold on now. I could swear I heard something up ahead. God damn it! Ambush! Cover people! Watch yourselves! You want some assholes? You just pissed off the wrong guy! And that means Ricky! Die on your book. 
Hoi, white legs don't leave survivors often. You're some kind of lucky, let me tell you. You came from outside, didn't you? From the civilized lands. Wow. Joshua will want to hear about this. Joshua Graham. He leads our tribe. Thanks to him, the dead horses are strong and safe from our enemies. He'll want to talk to anyone coming up from Southways. Guess that means just you now. Come, I can take you to him. Good sists. We head east then. Joshua is at our tribe's camp in the Eastern Virgin. Hold up. See that log over there? Take a closer look. There might be some good stuff tucked in there. What can I tell you? Mostly it's the mountain bighorners. Whole herd of them up on the cliffs there. Usually they're not too aggressive, but lately... My guess is one of the calves got lost somewhere along the way. Bighorners are communal. One missing calf, and the whole herd gets ornery. If that calf doesn't turn up soon, they might very well come down into the valley and attack the camp. Yeah? Hey, thanks. Most of the hunters don't listen when I tell them the problem. Just one thing. Try not to kill any bighorners if you can, yeah? You'll drive the herd off, and we'll have to range farther on our hunts. Hmm. You might try luring the baby out with some banana yucca. These bighorners go crazy for the stuff. That's great. I'll help any way I can. What can I tell you? White legs. Nasty bunch. They've been raiding deeper into Zion ever since New Canaan was wiped out. That's what Joshua said. White legs came down from Great Salt Lake in force. Fell on New Canaan before they could mount a defense. Joshua found some of the survivors led by a man named Daniel. Most of them have fled the valley. But Daniel stayed on with the Sorrows tribe. He and Joshua have been arguing over whether to stand and fight the White Legs, or take the Sorrows and the Dead Horses out of the valley. That's the weird part. Normally the White Legs keep to the Great Salt Lake. I don't know what brought them down this far south. What can I tell you? Our advanced scouts leave chalk signs to mark places rich with game. I'm not a full scout yet, so I follow the marks and guide the hunters. Dead horses mark ourselves to commemorate our hunts. When a hunter takes a great beast, or when a youth goes on his first hunt, he gets a tattoo. We came up in the land of the dead horse, though why the Bakwen folks called it that, I got no hint. We raided. We fought. We lost. Our enemies drove us back into Zion, and we would have died if it hadn't been for Joshua. Joshua and his Kaisar. When Joshua first came to us, he was servant to a man he called Kaisar. He led his master's armies, and we were ready to follow him into war. Then he lost his master's army to a tribe called Ensiar, the Sunset People. When he returned, he was as you saw him. Burned. Broken. But changed. He led us away from Kaisar. Led us to our own destiny in Zion. 
If it wasn't for Joshua, the dead horses would still be the whipping boys of the Zion Valley. He taught us how to hold our territory, to protect ourselves. He guided us away from Kaisar, and showed us how Kaisar would have destroyed us. Little bit. I met some of their missionaries a few times, but I've never been to their city. Joshua could tell you more. Or Daniel, I imagine. We decorate our clubs with them to honor Joshua Graham. They were the weapons of his old tribe, so now they are ours. Can't say they seem that dangerous to me. But Joshua says they... won the West. Only a little. I was very young. He was... different. Prouder, yes, but harder, crueler, more driven. Really, I was terrified of him. We all were. When he came back, I almost didn't believe he was the same man. He was humbler. He wanted to protect, not destroy. Well... Because they're our enemies. What else would we do? They take our land, they kill our scouts, they poach our hunting grounds. Ask away. He's been the chief of our tribe since he came back to the valley. He went off to the civilized world years ago to fight a war. That didn't go well. You see his face? You'll understand. I don't know. He doesn't talk about it much. Maybe. But how can two civilized tribes fight over something as small as a dam? Ha! <laughs> really? That's... my gods. Must be some mighty civilized folks who built that. Ha! <laughs> Now, you sound like Joshua. He always tells me that tribal life is better, that I should stay here and forget the outside world. Ask away. Go with fortune, friend. We follow this path for a while. Nice view of the river. Eh. Was some kind of lucky. Guess that one was all full of gecko, eh? <laughs> Don't get used to it, though. Yaogwai are plenty mean as a rule. You can take the path north here if you want, or head east over the ridge. There's a nice view from the top of that cliff if you want to look. Follow the old road south. Nearly there.
dead sentries? Shamans say our enemy's souls are trapped in them. But Joshua says it shows we're serious about fighting white legs. and sorrows mark them on taboo places. Places from back when. Good thing for you, I don't buy into that stuff. Hold up. You're getting all turned around. Check your map and backtrack a little. Down this path to the north. Hope you don't mind getting wet. These paintings show the dead horses' victories against other tribes. Lots more of them since Joshua came to us. Nearly there now. Watch out for traps in the water. Got to keep the white legs out somehow, eh?
here we are. Joshua's just ahead there, in the Angel Cave. Yeah, that. There can't really be a place where people go into big buildings and give away all their money just to watch. I heard it. Salt upon wounds butchered everyone in New Canaan and nailed their corpses to the cliffs.
Sure. Right behind? What can I tell you? Sure. Hey, I understand. I wish it could have been done different, but at least the calf is back with its herd. Go with fortune, friend. The spitter plants and the green monster men aren't native to Zion. Wonder where they came from. Yeah, that. 